Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, remain innocent to all kinds of evil. In his Turning Point Daily Devotional for May 15, 2013, David Jeremiah wrote, In the story of Adam and Eve's temptation and fall into sin, the serpent is described as cunning. Before their encounter with the serpent, Adam and Eve are described as naked. What we don't see in the translation to English is that the Hebrew word for cunning, arum, and naked, arum, are almost identical. This was no linguistic coincidence. Moses' point was to link the serpent's craftiness with Adam and Eve's innocence, symbolized by their nakedness. The serpent was no doubt beautiful in appearance and his words were definitely persuasive words that pick the first couple interests and appeal to their human desires to taste what was forbidden. By yielding to the serpent's charisma, their eyes were opened and their innocence lost. The point, innocent is often lost at the hands of that which is crafty, beautiful, or charismatic. Every follower of Jesus must be wise about what is good and innocent amid what is evil. A delicate topic that we are going to delve into this day, because we need to put it in context since it affects the life of every human being, and especially yours, you who are listening to me through this video. For today's reflection, we read in the letter to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teachings you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By a smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you, but I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Romans chapter 16 verses 17 to 20. It is good to know that the letter to the Romans was written during the winter of the year 57 to 58 AD. Paul was in the Greek city of Corinth. From there, he wrote the longest single letter in the New Testament, which he addressed to God's beloved in Rome. Trying to describe the term innocence is a bit elusive. Innocence is a special condition of the human being where experience plays an important role. It is the virtue of ignoring the dark and gloomy path of evil at the level of consciousness. It is not knowing the depraved riches of promiscuity and the claws of perversity and the demonic. In today's scripture passage, Paul is giving a wonderful key to live in the Christian life. We must be wise in what is good and innocent in what is the world of darkness. 
we must be wise and knowledgeable about what is good and pleases God. In the same way, we must be innocent and candid about what is evil. In other words, we must stay far away from that world as possible. Believe me, friend and brother who are watching this video, most people ignore or dismiss the warnings that it is better to remain innocent before the dark path of evil. There are those who say that they prefer to make mistakes and learn from their own errors. Well, yes, it is a right of every human being. But there are people who have wandered through the path where they have had to pay dearly for those mistakes, and many have met death in the process. A clear example of this is found in the beginning of creation. Adam and Eve experienced what God didn't want them to know, the opposite of good, which is evil. Their once virgin eyes and minds were open to a world from which they would never return, humanly speaking, because they crossed the limits imposed by God. The book of Genesis tells us, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 7. This tragic event changed the innocent world of the first couple. All for what? For disobeying the mandate and the limits established by the Creator. They received the punishment and the curse for the rest of their lives. God never intended for us to know about evil. In the beginning, He made the universe, the world, all living things, and mankind. So, He called it good. Evil, sin, and corruption never enter the picture until Eve was deceived by Satan. He used her curiosity about evil to trick her into thinking she'd be better off knowing what evil was. The result was disastrous for humanity. The rest is history. Another example is the person who succumbs to the temptation of the world of drugs. There are those who try to convince you by promising you unique and inc incomparable emotions, but they don't warn you that once you enter that world, it's very difficult for you to escape again. The vice often continues to plunge you into the use of stronger substances in order to satisfy that enslaving need, which could now lead you to death itself. You can realize what that means just by walking around places through streets full of those unfortunates in incapable of controlling their addictions in most of the metropolis around the planet. One more example, and perhaps one of the least talked about today in our churches is falling into the cobwebs of the occult, the supernatural, the black magic, or the Ouija board. These malevolent acts open doors to a world you later wish you had never seen. Those of us who have been through this world of terror, believe me, it's something that is never erased from your mind, something that is never forgotten. There are people who, for the sake of emotion and adrenaline, like to entertain themselves with horror movies, the diabolical and ignorantly believe that there is something harmless, like the case of two young people whom I warned to expose themselves and open the windows of their soul to that world. One night, after finishing watching a horror movie, they had a terrifying supernatural experience that made them shiver. These young people were Christians, and after this event, they promise never to commit such an aberration again and ask God for forgiveness. Those of us who have lived and experienced this before knowing about God's love and His plan of salvation for us, have been able to be liberated and overcome the scars 
that mark you for the rest of your life. Praise the Lord. Maintaining a mental innocence of this world is the most advisable and convenient thing to do. For this reason, those of us who have been through this recommend that it is preferable to be ignorant of those paths than to have to experience them because you run the risk of never escaping that world again. Because in order to get out, you need to make a personal decision which will allow the Lord Jesus to rescue you from the clutches of darkness. So why take that risk? Why expose yourself like this unnecessarily? The scripture in the letter to the Philippians advises, Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Philippians chapter 2 verses 14 to 15. It is for this reason that the scripture warned us, recommend us to be innocent regarding all kinds of evil. Falling out by curiosity, ignorance, or carelessly rejecting advice can open doors you may never be able to close again, and experiences that you may never forget. I have always told my daughters when talking about the occult, the world of darkness, that I prefer not to share with them the experiences of my childhood because it is preferable that their minds remain innocent to those details. I have always thought and said, give your mind a small opening on the world of evil and darkness and this will take the opportunity to flood it with terror and anxiety. It is very simple. We can't be tempted or overwhelmed with things we don't think about, don't stop at, or don't know about it. Therefore, don't think about bad things, nor look for them. Rather, be innocent about them, and then you will not fight against such things. Do you remember that Satan took advantage of Eve's curiosity? Don't give him space in your mind, even if it is out of mere curiosity. The popular saying goes that curiosity killed the cat. On the contrary, we must think of the good planted in our hearts and it will become evident in our lives as our minds are renewed to these things. The question is, what is the good we should be thinking about? Paul said in the letter to the Colossians, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 3. This is the key for us to experience an amazing transformation in Christ. Let's just think about the things of God and be consumed with them and they will overflow in the way we live our lives. Paul is giving us a great instruction today. Oscar Wilde, the Irish poet of the 1800s wrote, The gods had given me almost everything, but I let myself be lured into long spells of senseless and sensual ease. Tired of being on the heights, I deliberately went down to the depths in search of new sensation. What the paradox was to me in the sphere of thought, perversity became to me in the sphere of passion. I grew careless of the lives of others. I took pleasure where it pleased me and passed on. I forgot that every little action of the common day makes or unmakes character, and that therefore what one has done in the secret chamber, one has some day to cry aloud from the housetop. I ceased to be lord over myself. I was no longer the captain of my soul, and did not know it. I allowed pleasure to dominate me. I ended up in horrible disgrace. My dear, 
friend and brother. Innocence is not synonymous of ignorance in the evil way that the world wants to present it. Innocence to the ways of evil will allow our soul to learn the ways of good that God seeks for our lives. As Paul tells us, we must be wise in the path of good and innocent to the malevolent perversity of this world ruled by demonic hosts. Never allow your curiosity to drag you down paths from which you will most likely never recover. Take courage and define your future in wisdom. God of all mercy, help to maintain innocence in the face of the knowledge of evil to those who still do not know it, to those who have not descended into the abyss of darkness. Those of us who once lived under that world of terror, help us to remain faithful to you. Thank you, Father, because one day the glorious light of your gospel reaches and we will rescue from the clutches of the evil one. Guide us along paths of wisdom. We implore you in the sublime name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.